Praise the Lord. Aleluya. Gracias, Señor. Aleluya. Say with me. Gracias, Señor. Señor means Lord. Aleluya. Praise the Lord. How many enjoy the worship this morning? Aleluya. We had an international worship here in Bethel Temple. En la iglesia Bethel. Amen. Gloria a Dios. Say, Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios means glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank Pastor Charles and Pastor Lori for letting us uh, come this morning and, and uh, talk to you guys for a, little, for a little bit this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we want to bless our pastors this morning. I know they're resting. Praise God. How many enjoy their Thanksgiving? Amen. You guys ha have any turkey left or... No, everything gone? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go into our Bibles this morning. And if we can stand for the reading of the word, give reverence to the word. Let's go into the book of Luke, chapter 5. And we're going to read verse 1 through 11. Amen. When you have it, say amen. If you're still looking for it, say, wait for me, Pastor Jose. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. Hallelujah. I believe God has the word for us this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. So tell the one next to you, don't speak to me right now. Because God is going to speak to me. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to read the word of God from, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, lunch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down your net. Verse 6. And when they had done this, pause. It says, when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets was breaking. So they signaled to their partners and the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so they began to sink. What a blessing, brothers and sisters. When Simon and Peter saw it, he fell down at the feet of, the, of Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O oh Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish, which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon, and Jesus said to, to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their nets to land, they forsook all and follow him. I want you to put your hand in your heart this morning and repeat this prayer. Father God, speak to my heart because I will obey. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the, in the presence of Jesus. I want to speak to you this morning about the subject, God can change your situation. Tell the one next to you, God can change your situation. Hallelujah. Here in our text, Peter just didn't say he was going to let down the nets. Peter followed through with what he said. This is very important. Peter followed through with what he said, and that's called, my brothers and sisters, obedience. How many people tell the Lord on Sunday, 
that they're going to do something and they, they don't do it. They don't do it. Lord, I'm going to pray more. Lord, I'm going to trust you more. Lord, I'm going to start tithing. Lord, I'm going to volunteer. But come Monday morning and we don't follow through with what we said. Do you know anyone like that? Don't look at them right now. We say, we talk. We get emotional, and that's okay to get emotional, but then we don't follow through with what we say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why many don't see any results in their Christian life. Because we don't obey the word of God sometimes. Hallelujah. I want to tell you this morning that God doesn't respond to the many words that we can utter on a Sunday morning. God responds to obedience. To obedience. And it was Peter's obedience that made them catch a great number of fish. Hallelujah. I want to tell you this morning that obedience to God will give you great results. It is obedience to the Lord. God has never been able to bless a disobedient. Hallelujah. One of the most important things that you should learn in all the Bible is that it doesn't matter how much you, you may know the Bible or how many degrees you may have theological. Hallelujah. And if you're not willing to obey the Word of God, you don't know anything. You don't know anything. Because it's in obedience where we receive our breakthrough. It's in, in obedience where we receive our miracle. Hallelujah. I came to preach this morning. God's word is effective. And it works, my brothers and sisters. But only for those who obey it. The world, the world is full of people who know the Ten Commandments. But how many obey them? How many obey them? When you are obedient to what God says, you will have powerful results. And we see this in Scripture. I want to tell you this morning that sometimes obeying God will challenge your thinking. Sometimes obeying God will challenge your pocketbook. Oh, Lord, let it challenge everything but not my pocketbook. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will challenge your faith. It will challenge your lifestyle. Hallelujah. Because there are things that God will tell you that will not make sense to you. How many know that? Hallelujah. But it's there where you have to tell the Lord, Lord, I'm going to obey you even though I don't understand what you're telling me. When you are a man and you are a woman of faith, you obey God even when you don't understand what he's saying to you or even what he's asking of you, you still obey. You trust and you obey the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Abraham's obedience was what made him call a friend of God. Look at James chapter 2 verse 23. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. Hallelujah. The obedience of Abraham was the thing that marked his generation. Abraham learned to obey God even when he did not understand or why God was asking him. Abraham never questioned God. Do you, you know what that's called? That's called total obedience to the Lord. Total obedience. Hallelujah. The Christian who does not obey is the Christian who lives his life halfway. Halfway. He's a Christian who lives as he sees fit. Such a person will never have the results according to scriptures. Because it takes obedience to God. Hallelujah. You know, everybody that comes to this church receives a good word from our pastor. 
He receives a good word from a pastor. But if you don't obey it, nothing will change in your life. If you don't obey it, nothing will happen in your home. Nothing will happen in your marriage. You need to obey it. Tell the one next to you, you need to obey it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at the apostle Paul told the church of Philippi. He says, the things which you have learned and received and, and the things you have heard and saw in me, this do. Repeat it with me. This do. What's that mean? That means obedience. The things that you learn on a Sunday morning, the things that you learn on deeper class, the, the things that you see, you learn, these things you do, you obey it. Hallelujah. And then it says, and the, and the God of peace will be with you. Why sometimes we don't have peace in our middle of our situation? Because we are not obeying the word of God. And it's, and it's in obeying where we have peace with the Lord. Hallelujah. I came to preach uh, this morning. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Hallelujah. Oh, Pastor Hosea, I thought you was going to bring us a, a Thanksgiving message. No. I came to bring a, a Jesus message this morning. <laughs> if Peter would have not obeyed Jesus, his situation would never have changed. And he would never have seen the supernatural miracle that transformed his life and impacted his life. It was in his obedience to the Lord. I want to tell you this morning that promise, the promises of God are only fulfilled for those who walk in obedience. They are not for the disobedient. Therefore, the obedient. Look at what Jesus said to Peter. Throw the net. Peter surely said to himself, he doesn't know what he's saying. I am the professional here. Jesus is just a carpenter. I'm the professional here. I know what I'm doing. Do you know anybody like that? Don't look at them now. Sometimes they tell, oh, Jesus doesn't know what he's doing. But surely Peter said, he doesn't know what he's doing. I've been here uh, all night fishing and have caught nothing. And he's telling me to throw the net. But here is what Peter said to the Lord, even though I don't understand what you're telling me, Lord, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to obey you. Even though it doesn't make sense to me, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to step in obedience to what you're telling me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Peter said to him, I will do what you're telling me to do. And it was there in that obedience that Peter enclosed a large quantity of fish. Hallelujah. I want to tell you this morning, there are blessings that will never reach your boat until you begin to be obedient to God. We need to be obedient to the Lord. Tell, you, tell the one next to you, we need to be obedient. There are great blessings that God has for, for your home. There are great blessings that God has for your family. There are great blessings that God has for, for your marriage, even for your company. Hallelujah. But it cannot be manifested or fulfilled until you enter in total obedience to the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord says, I want obedience. I don't want sacrifice. I want obedience. I ask you this morning, what good is it to occupy a seat on a Sunday morning, Sunday after Sunday? Or that you come on a, on a, on a deeper class and you sit down on a Bible study and you learn about the book of Romans or you learn about the book of Hebrew or you learn about the last day, what good is it if you're not going to obey what you are learning? What good is it if you're not going to apply it? 
Sometimes we in church have a lot of information out here that it needs to come down 18 inches to the heart. We know too much about the Bible, but the problem is that we don't apply it. Thank you for your enthusiasm. What good is it that you take notes this morning if you're not going to obey what the Lord's telling you? What good is it to come to a prayer meeting or even run around the church? Hallelujah. But you don't obey the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord wants obedience from us. Hallelujah. There's where we're going to see the victory of the Lord in our lives. And his obedience. Hallelujah. Jesus even said it in Luke chapter 6, 46. He says, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I tell you? we always telling him, Lord, Lord, but we're not doing what he's telling us. And it's, it's in an obedience where we see results. And we see the heavens open. Did you know that disobedience is like a, a, it's like a, a brass, uh, uh, the heavens grow brass? If you look at the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, it says disobedience, it closes the, the heavens. But obedience, obedience opens the heavens. How many of you want to open heaven over your life? Open, your, open, open heaven over your home. Open heaven over your company. Open heaven over your family. Well, we need to start being obedient to God. Then if you read that Deuteronomy says all these blessings will chase you down when we obey the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have become very selective in what we want to hear or what we want to obey. We become selective. Oh, I like this, but I don't like that. Some of, of you this morning don't like this, this message about obedience. But it's going to be preached this morning anyways. Hallelujah. We become selective. And what we want to hear, what we want to obey. God doesn't that God doesn't want partial obedience. He wants total obedience. Did you know that partial obedience is total disobedience? He wants total obedience. Hallelujah. God requires obedience from his children. He does not want sacrifice. It is only those who obey and keep his word. Who will see what? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit manifesting in their lives. Hallelujah. Look at John chapter 14. Verse 21 and, and verse 23. And he who has my commandments. My commandments is my word. And keeps them. What's that mean, Pastor Jose? And obeys them. It is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by who? By my father. And I will love him. And what? And manifest myself in him. Look at verse 23. And Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, will keep my words. Will obey my words. It's not just say, Lord, I love you, but we, 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 we do still what we want to do. We do what he wants us to do. This is not, make, let's make a deal. This is not the Monty Hall show. This, this is God telling us, this is the deal. Hallelujah. Sometimes we want to make a deal with God. No. God says, this is the deal. And if you want to be blessed, you need to obey me. Hallelujah. Thank you for your enthusiasm. And then says, I love this part, man. I just love it. He says, my father will love you. And then look at it. He says, and we, plural, 
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We, hallelujah, will come to him or to her to make a home with him. What a powerful thing that is, man. To have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in us, hallelujah, moving in us and manifesting in us, hallelujah. Why? Because we are obedient to the Lord. Because we love him, not just in words, but in truth and action. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What was the thing that disconnected Saul from the presence of God? It was his rebellion and his uh, disobedience. Saw that was prophesying. And the Lord used them powerfully. But what was the thing that disconnected him from God? It was his rebellion and his disobedience. God told Saul what he needed to do with the wicked army of the Amaleks. But what did Saul did? He did things his way. He was selective. He says, I'm going to do this, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do this. And I call it, he did, he did it his way. He did it the Frank Sinatra way. Do you know anybody like that does it the Frank Sinatra way? Don't look at him now. What was the, the result of Saul's disobedience? God rejected him. God rejected him. Here's a man that God is using powerful, but then he started being disobedient, and then God started rejecting him. Because disobedience makes us harden our hearts. That's why Jesus said, the word of God says, that if today you hear his voice, what does it say? Do not harden your, your heart. Respond to him. Don't say this word is good for so and so. No, say this word, this word was good for moi. Sometimes we are, we are so generous in church, we like to pass words to other people. And we say, oh my God, if so-and-so would have been here, and so-and-so would have been here. And God is speaking to you. Hallelujah. And we come in and we leave the same way we came in, with the same burden, with the same problems, with the same situation, when God is trying to get you hold of your attention. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So disobedience makes our heart in our hearts and it resists what God is speaking to us. We resist it. Sometimes people get nervous and they go to the bathroom. I, I, I want to put speakers in the bathroom. You can run, but you can't hide. The Lord is after you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we decide to persist in disobedience, our heart is, is going to harden in such a way that we stop hearing the voice of God. And you know what happens? Now we start hearing other voices that are not from God. And that's what happened to Saul. He stopped hearing the voice of, of God and he started consulting a witch, other spirits, hallelujah, and that happened because of his disobedience, hallelujah, and you think it's God talking to you, but it's not God talking to you, it's other spirits that are talking to you, there are many today that God is rejecting. God, in his great love, my brothers and sisters, in his mercy that are new every morning, God tried to speak to us and to teach us like he tried to teach Saul. But we still persist in doing the things our way. We still persist in disobeying God. And God is looking for people who will obey him. That even though it doesn't doesn't make sense to you, but he tells you you are still going to obey him. Hallelujah. God told Peter, throw the net. And obeying God will show if you truly love the Lord. Hallelujah. 
I want to tell you that God is going to ask you for things that you are not willing to give. That it's going to take faith to be able to give those things to God. Hallelujah. God asked Abraham for his son. And what did Abraham did? He gave him his son. God asked Abraham to leave the land of the Chaldeans and to leave his relative. And what did Abraham do? He let them. God told Abraham to disconnect from Lot. And what did Abraham do? He disconnected him from him. God told Abraham to build an altar for me. And what did Abraham do? He obeyed him. God told Abraham to get all the males and circumcise them. And what did Abraham do? He obeyed him. That's total obedience to the Lord. It was impartial obedience. It was total obedience to the Lord. This morning, what is the Lord asking of you? That you are not willing to give or to obey. This morning, there is people here, I know there's people here, that God has called to ministry full-time. And you know that God has called you to full-time ministry, but you still have not obeyed the Lord. You still have not obeyed the Lord. Because you're not willing to give up things in your life. You're not willing to for, forsake things like Peter had to forsake things. He said, forsake, he forsook things and he left and followed Jesus. Hallelujah. And God is calling you to full-time ministry. And you are here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to tell you this morning that you will never be successful in your life until you begin to obey the Lord. Obedience is the great secret for those who want God to change their situation. Hallelujah. Let me ask you this morning, in what situation you are in this morning? Maybe you are here today and you have been working and doing things in your own way. In your own ability. And that has caused frustration and exhaustion in your life. The Lord tells you to go out into the deep this morning. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Peter, obeying God, locked up a large quantity of fish. I want to tell you that obeying God will make things in your life, hallelujah, to die. That you are not wanting to, for, for those things to die. Hallelujah. Look at John chapter 12, verse 24. He says, most surely I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls in the ground. Who's the grain of wheat? Wheat is we are. And it needs to fall in the ground. In other words, it needs to die. So the gospel is not about us. It's about him. And there's things in, in our lives that need to die. So God can be glorified in us. Hallelujah. You cannot hold to the world and serve God at the same time. Hallelujah. It says it, it, it falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces what? Much grain in our lives. Hallelujah. Did you know that Christ at one point did not want to die at the cross? Did you know that? When Jesus was praying in the garden, he said, Father, if it's possible, pass this cup from me. But he said, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus' obedience was stronger than what he was feeling. He said, but not my will, but yours be done, Father, in my life. Because that's the reason he came to this earth. To offer himself as a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It was his obedience that led him to the cross of Calvary. 
Jesus was not forced to go there at the cross. He went to the cross voluntary because he saw you, he saw me, he saw each one of us in our despair and our depression. And he said, I need to go to the cross for them. He himself said, no one takes my, my life, but I lay my life freely. Hallelujah. In other words, Jesus is saying there's no authority in heaven, on earth, or in hell that can take my, my life from me. It is I who am going to give it to my Father in obedience. Hallelujah. Obedience. Say obedience. Obedience to the Father led him to the cross. Obedience to the Father led him to the death, but obedience to the Father also raised him up from the dead and set him at the right hand of the Father in glory and majesty. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was his obedience. Hallelujah. God tells you this morning, if you begin to obey me, then you will begin to experience changes in your life. Changes in your finances. Changes in your marriage. Hallelujah. Which you have never experienced. Sometimes we need to see why things are not happening in our lives. And the problem is not nowhere else. We got to look inward. It is obedience one of the problems in our lives. This morning you start obeying God, God, you will see hope arise in your marriage, in your family, in your sons, in your daughters. Hallelujah. The Bible said that in closing a large quantity of fish, the, the, the boat began to sink. Wow. They call, they call their companions, and the Bible said that they were also filled with fish, and there was no room. They received an overflow of a blessing that even though they were professional fishermen, they had never caught that much of fish before. Hallelujah. And it was in their obedience where they were able to be blessed. This morning I came to tell you, get ready. Get ready because the boats are going to be full. The boats are going to be full. Get ready. When, Pastor Jose, when you begin to obey, not halfway, but totally to the Lord, the boats are going to give food today. Hallelujah. When God begins to bless you, but don't stay there in the blessing. Don't stay in the miracle. Don't stay in the healing. Follow him that you're going to see greater glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship Jesus. Look at, look at Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And it says give. And it's talking about giving money, but also if you give yourself to the Lord. If you give something to the Lord. Peter gave his boat to the Lord. Look at what happened. It says, and, I will, and it will be given to you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. And running over will be put into your bosom for the same measure that you use. It will be measured back to you. As we offer our lives, as we give to the Lord, as we obey to the Lord, we cannot outgive God. Hallelujah. How many this morning are ready to see God beyond their, their impossibilities? To see God beyond the medical report. Hallelujah. To see God beyond their financial situation or their marital situation or their problems they have at home. How many are, are ready to see them beyond that? Hallelujah. I want to tell you that when Jesus got to Peter's boat, he got to a frustrated boat. He got to a failed boat. He came to an exhausted boat. He came to a person who had been working all night and had no results. I've been fishing 
hallelujah, in a boat. And if, if you don't catch nothing, I tell you, that's exhausting. Especially in a boat. Now, if you go to a bridge, you know what time it is. You, you know that you're probably going to catch a little one like this. But if you go in a boat, you, you better bring, the, you better bring a, a monster. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And perhaps this is how you feel this morning. You feel frustrated. You feel like failure. You feel defeated. You feel like you have no chance. You feel like Peter watching the nets, throwing in the towel, giving up. Hallelujah. I tell you this morning, don't do it. Because today, Jesus comes to your bow and tells you, I am the God who changes failures into success. I am the God who changes, hallelujah, defeat into victory. I am the God who changes your sorrow and turns them into dancing. Hallelujah. I come to your boat this morning. I come walking in the water. Jesus, the water walker. He comes to your boat this morning. Hallelujah. This morning, if you are going through a financial need, the Bible says that God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Today, I want to tell you that God is the God who changes your situation. I do not know in what situation you are in your home or in your family, but Jesus is coming today to change your situation if you start obeying him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, I don't know what is, the, what is happening in your marriage or in your health, but God can change your situation in a moment, in an instant. If you obey him, hallelujah. Today, if you let Jesus get into your boat and begin to obey him, Jesus is going to take your failures and turn them into success. He can change everything. Tell the one next to you, he can change everything. Hallelujah. Peter was at the shore frustrated. He was watching his nets. Without fish, defeated until the presence of Jesus came and entered the boat and changed his situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, the presence of Jesus is here. And he is going to change your pain into joy. There was a mother talking to me this morning about her son. They was going through some problems. The Lord can change the problem today. He is going to change your sickness into healing. He is going to change that medical report into success. Hallelujah. He is going to change your impossibilities into possibilities. Hallelujah. This morning I came to create faith in you because faith comes by hearing the word of God. I came to create faith in you that what God did with Peter, God can do with you this morning. The same God who changed Peter's defeat into a miracle, he can do it for you this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Sabahriyabaya. Sobereyayakima. Sokereyayasema. I feel the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is going to change the diagnostic of the, of the doctors, the reports of the doctors. And maybe you are here and you are a, in a list for a transplant. Hallelujah. You may be the last at the list, but God can change you to, to the first of the list this morning. Hallelujah. He can turn things around. Turn things around. Hallelujah. I remember a, a person that used to come to our a Spanish service, he, he moved to Puerto Rico. He, he needed a, a kidney uh, a transplant. And he was on the last of the list. But while he was 
in the last of the, of the list, he didn't murmur or complain one minute. While he was waiting, he was thanking God and thanking God. And all of a sudden, hallelujah, the, he received the call and says, we got a kidney to you. Hallelujah. God took him from the back of the list and put him to the front of the list. Hallelujah. And today he is healthy. Hallelujah. And only God can do that. Hallelujah. You know why? Because he started obeying the Lord. He started obeying the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible from Genesis to Revelation is full of God changing his defeat into victory. Into changing situations. Hallelujah. Look in the, in first, in the first uh, book of Samuel. We see Anna. She was barren. She couldn't have no kids. But the following year she had one, Samuel. And then she had many more. God changed her situation because Anna started obeying the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. We had that situation in our congregation too. A couple for 11 years trying to have a baby. She lost four. But while she was waiting, she started thanking God, giving praise to God. Just this last month ago, she had her first son. Hallelujah. God changed her situation. Hallelujah. Because that's the God we serve. Hallelujah. We see this Shunammite woman. That her son had died. There was no hope. He was dead. And what happened? The prophet enters in. And he lays on top of that son. And he comes alive. Hallelujah. And gives it back to her mom. Hallelujah. Maybe your sons and daughters are away. They're prodigal sons. God is going to bring them back. Wherever they're at, from the east, from the north, from the south, and from the west, they were going to be come back to the house of the Lord. Look in the book of, of chapter, uh, in the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 35 and 39, speaks about the Jairus uh, daughter. He says, while he was still speaking, some came to the rulers of the synagogue house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said to the rulers of the synagogue, do not be afraid. And this is what the Lord tells you this morning. Do not be afraid. No matter what the other people are saying, no matter what the doctors are saying, no matter what other reports are saying, do not be afraid. Hallelujah. He says, only believe. Only believe. Didn't he, didn't he tell Martha, if you believe, you will see what? The glory of God, the salvation of the Lord. Only believe. Hallelujah. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, and brothers, and James. We need to surround ourselves with people with faith. Not people that are speaking negative things. Hallelujah. That's why he didn't let the other come in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He came into the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw the tumult and those who wept. It was professional criers. <laughs> they got paid to cry. When he came in, he said to them, why made this commotion? Jesus said, and weep, the child is not dead. But sleeping. Hallelujah. And Jesus changed that defeat into victory. Jesus took that girl in the head and said, Talita Takumi. Girl, I tell you to get up. And what happened? That girl got up. Hallelujah. That girl got up. Hallelujah. Look in the book of Matthew chapter 8. Verse 8. Speaks about the centurion who had a servant who was bedridden at home, paralyzed, seriously. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Look at what verse says. says. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But look at what it says. But only speak a word. 
and my servant will be healed. Wow. Hallelujah. And what happens in Isaiah chapter 55, 11, look at this. So shall my word be, be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the things which I send it to. Hallelujah. The word that is coming forth right now is accomplishing what God wants it to accomplish. Hallelujah. Jesus changed that defeat into a victory. The word of God says that the servant was healed at the same hour. Glory to God. This morning, how many of you believe that the same God who changed this people's situation is here this morning to change yours? Hallelujah. He's here. He's walking in this place. He's moving in this place. He's talking to you this morning. He is the same God. And he's here this morning to change whatever situation that you are in this morning. Today his word has come forth out of, out of my mouth. Obey it. Apply it. Believe it. And God will do the rest. Hallelujah. Look at what 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, in the lower part of the verse. It says, Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophet, and what? And you shall prosper. Hallelujah. This morning, what has God been asking of you, if you could stand? What has God been asking of you this morning? And you haven't given it to him. In what area in your life you have been not obeying God? This morning, if God has spoken to you, hallelujah, I am going to ask you to leave your seat and come down to the altar. And we're going to pray, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God has spoken to you, if there's things that God is asking of you and you have not given to him, leave your seat real quick and come to the altar this morning. No matter who's seeing you, who's watching you, come, 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 come to the, come to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Come to the Lord this morning. Come, 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 come. Let's give him an applause to those who's coming. Come, come. In those areas in your life that God is speaking to you, come. Hallelujah. And you have not obeyed him fully. Come. The Lord has got a blessing for your life. Hallelujah. If God has called you to full-time ministry and you have not obeyed him, come. Come. Come this morning. Hallelujah. Come this morning. Come. Hallelujah. Come this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for those who are coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come, Lord. Come. Hallelujah. 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 This word was for us this morning. Obedience. God wants obedience, not sacrifice. Come this morning. If you don't know the Lord, if you have not given in your heart to the Lord, come to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. God has a great calling for you. Hallelujah. God wants to do powerful things in, in your life and through your life. But we need to start walking in obedience. Hallelujah. Sometimes things are happening in our lives. Hallelujah. It's because we are not walking in obedience. We need to walk in obedience because when we walk in obedience, we close the door to the devil. Hallelujah. We remove every legality. When we walk in disobedience, we give him legality to him. Hallelujah. But when we walk in obedience, we close the door to the devil. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come this morning. And let the Holy Spirit minister to you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's more people that need to come. The Lord is tugging in your heart. Come. Come. Don't say you're going to do it at your home. Do it here. The altar call is here. This is the altar of exchange. Hallelujah. God is going to have, give you something, a blessing in your life this morning. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we love you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Close your eyes and just start talking to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, bless everyone that is here today that has come this morning, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch. Touch this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for Brother Bernard. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Touch his life right now, God. Super miracle. A miracle over his life, God, right now. In Jesus' mighty name. I speak life over him. I speak healing over him right now. Upon Brenda, Lord, in Jesus' name, your fire, your presence, God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is Santo. Hallelujah. Father, touch. Touch this morning, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Touch, Lord, from the crown of, the, of her head to the soles of her feet. In Jesus' mighty name, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for Jesse. Touch him, Lord. Touch him right now. Touch him, Holy Spirit. Touch him, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, Father God. Give him a breakthrough right now. We glorify her life, God. Lord, in every area of her life, total obedience. Total obedience to the Lord. Total obedience to the Lord. Total obedience to the Lord. The Lord's asking you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Receive, receive from the Lord. Receive from the Lord this morning. Obedience, the Lord wants. Obedience from your life. Hallelujah. You will start obeying the Lord and you'll start trusting the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and worship it. Señor Dios, todo poderoso. Holy, holy is the Lord. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Worship you. Oh, sí, Señor. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're watching online. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you will repeat this prayer after me, Father God, I, I repent this morning of my sins. I believe that you are the Savior. I believe that you came to this earth and you died for me. And this morning I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I give my life to you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have made that prayer, hallelujah, let us know. Give us, write us an email. Hallelujah. We will contact back to you. Hallelujah. Now, Father, bless everyone that is here. Bless every family, Lord. Bless every, every person here in this place, in this campus, Lord. 
Let your glory come. Let your glory fill this place, God. As we start walking in obedience, as we start living in obedience, Lord, let your glory come. Let your presence come. We are not going to just be hearers of the word. We're going to be doers of the word. We're going to walk in your word. We're going to obey your word. We're going to put it to practice, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Oh, God, be glorified in this morning in this place. Bless every family, Lord. Let your peace come upon them, Father God. Hallelujah. Let your glory, oh, God, rise upon them this morning, God. In the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make his face shine upon you. Hallelujah. And give you peace. Hallelujah. God bless you. Dios te bendiga. Amen.